Hi, this is Mike and thanks for joining me today. I did have a question not too long ago about how to design something using Shortcuts a lot 5 and then using that in design space with a Cricut machine using a foil quill. So today I thought I would take this opportunity to design something in Shortcuts a lot 5 and then using the foil quill in my Cricut Explore machine. So let's go ahead and create a design. So the first thing that I want to do is create my base. Now I'm not going to create a card base because that's pretty easy and I think everybody knows how to create a card base. So I'm going to create the panel in which that I'm going to foil. So the first thing that I want to do is make a rectangle. So I'm going to go over here and click on my draw shape and I'm going to draw a rectangle. Now I'm just going to give this a color. It really doesn't matter what color it is and you'll see why later. I'm going to go ahead and click my selection tool and for this it is already set to none but let's just change this color. Green, let's make something a little bit easier for us to see. So maybe a lighter green like that. That looks great. And stroke, I do not want a stroke on it. All right, so the next thing that I need to do is to make this the right size. So if I click on my position and size tool over here on the right. Now, normally my cards that I make are four and a quarter by five and a half. So for this card, I wanna make a panel and usually I make my panels anywhere from an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch smaller. So for this one, because my card base is four and a quarter by five and a half, I'm gonna make sure my proportions is unchecked. And so for the width, I'm going to make that four. And for the height, I'm going to make it five and a quarter. And I'm going to hit enter. So this is going to be my card base. Now, what I want to do is I want to lock it. So if I go ahead and click this little tick box right underneath the lock icon, my layer is locked and I can't do anything to it at this point. And so basically, I'm going to leave that there as we work so that this doesn't move. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is create some designs. So let's go ahead and create some designs. I'm going to make a Christmas card. So if your library panel is not open, you can go to Window and Library. And I just happen to have this one selected, but you have all of these different shapes in here, or you can create your own. I am going to use the Christmas tree. And I'm going to, if you can see, I have my little arrow, if I hover over the corner, it's a double arrow, which means I can resize it. I'm going to hold my shift key and make that bigger. And I'm gonna put that approximately here for right now. And I think that's all the shapes that I want out of this. So I'm gonna close that to give us some more room. And so, the next thing that we need to do is I want to fill this with something. Now there's a couple different ways you could fill it and let me show you one way really quickly. If you go up here to the effects window, let's highlight this, make sure that your selection tool is on and your object is highlighted. You can go to effects and you have all of these different options up here. So if I did a lattice, you'll see what a lattice does. And if I click preview, you'll see that it puts a lattice in there. This kind of really doesn't look good, but you can, you know, play around with the settings, click preview, and that actually doesn't look too bad. So there's different things that you can do with the different uh, effects within shortcuts a lot. For this one, I've already kind of planned on what I want to do. So I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to go back over here to my shape window and I'm going to actually do a spiral. So off to the side, I'm going to create kind of a small spiral. And I'm going to take my selection tool and I'm going to move it right about in the center here. Now on a Mac, I'm holding the option key. If you are on a PC, you're going to use the alt key. You can hold that key and drag and it will actually make a duplicate. So now I have a duplicate here. Move this off to the side a little bit. Again, I'm holding my option key on a Mac or an alt key on a PC and dragging. Now you can see I have two. 
same thing. I'll adjust these in just a second. Just kind of want to get these open. Or copied. There we go. Maybe three I don't want there, so I'm going to click that and click the delete key. And just kind of line these up. And I think that looks kind of cool. That doesn't look too bad. That looks like a pretty cool uh, decorated Christmas tree. All right, so the next couple things that I want to do is if you can see over in my panel over here, all of these spirals are their own shape. Now I want to make sure that I combine them all because I don't want them all a different shape when I upload them to Design Space. So for this example again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn off or lock, I mean, the tree so I cannot move the tree. And as you can see, the bottom layer is locked as well. So if I highlight everything, the only thing that's highlighted is my spirals. Now if I go up to Object and I go to Merge, you're going to see all of those on the right hand side in the panel over here. They are all together and now they are one shape. They are all together. And so now I can go ahead and center these by taking off the lockbox. Now if I select everything, what's selected, you'll see over here it's turned blue on my layers panel. And I have the spirals and I have the tree. And if I'm on my size and position over here, I can go ahead and click center and those are centered. Those are pretty cool. So two down. So we got the tree and we got the spirals. So now we need to add some text. So there's a couple different ways to add text. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my text window. And I'm leaving it as a default of Helvetica right now to show you something. So I'm going to go ahead and click here. And I'm just going to type Merry Christmas. And I'm going to make this a lot bigger so that you guys can see. So there's some things that we can do with uh, shortcuts a lot that kind of makes it a little bit fun. Now, if you're using a foil quill, and you may or may not know this, but it's basically only going to go and quill the outline of your text. Well, sometimes we don't want that. So a good thing to do is making sure your text is highlighted. And if you click your selection tool over here, you can click on your text and it is highlighted. If I go to effects, I can go to line fill and I have auto preview unchecked. So I'm going to click auto preview and you can see that all of these little lines are now in there. So that's pretty cool. So what that means is the foil quill will go through and draw lines just like you see here. So that's kind of a pretty neat thing. Now the thing that you have to keep in mind is that if I hit OK and I've accepted that, when I scroll this back down, it may or may not look like what you wanted to. So it's still too big for the card base. So let's scroll, resize that down a little bit. Not too bad, but if I zoom in, hmm, I'm not quite sure because I think that with it being that small, you might lose a lot of the, uh, the actual shape of the letters. So for in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and use a different font, but I did want to show you that you can play with the different features in Shortcuts a lot to get a different result. Now, this is a free font that I'm going to show you. It's called White Angelica, and you can find it on Defont. So if I go ahead and click on my fonts over here on the right hand side, and I scroll all the way down. Now this is a great font to use because it will actually look like a single line font. So White Angelica. I'm going to go ahead and click here and I'm going to type Merry Christmas. Now you can see that it's 
it still does have an outline, but because it's a very small or thin outline, when it's done writing, it really looks really nice. So let's go ahead and make this a lot smaller. I'm holding my shift key and dragging this down. I'm just moving this over until it fits. Yeah, it looks a little better. Make it a little bit bigger at this point. Great. All right, so I have my text pretty much the way I want it. And I'm going to, before I do anything else, I'm going to hold my Option or my Alt key and I'm just going to make a duplicate because I do want the text to be the same and I do want the font, I mean I want the font to be the same and for the same size. So now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead back to my type tool and I can double click this and I can delete that and it'll be the same exact size and it'll be the same font and I want Happy New Year. Which is perfect. And the thing that we need to do now before we move on is we need to make sure we merge our text. And the reason we need to do that is so that it's smooth. If we don't, the text will overlap and we really don't want that. We want it to be one smooth text. I think we've talked about that in another tutorial is if we didn't do that and we were doing vinyl, the vinyl would cut out and overlap the letters. So if we click that and we go to object and merge, and we go ahead and click that and we go to object and merge. Okay, perfect. Now we want everything centered. So let's un let's lock our tree. Let's lock our spirals. And we were gonna, I'm holding the shift key now and I'm gonna click on the layers that I want. I'm gonna uncheck or unlock the card base and I'm holding shift key and unlocking that. So all three of those are now selected and I'm going to go over here to my panel and I'm going to make sure that those are centered. Now I do think the new year needs to come down a little bit. So if I go ahead and I click that on the panel, I can nudge it down with my arrow keys just a little bit. That looks a little better. Merry Christmas. There you go. Perfect. That looks pretty good to me and I really like that. I don't remember if I centered the tree to the card. So if we take the, uh, the spirals, the tree, and the card, and we center those, there we go. Now they're centered. And that looks like a pretty cool card to me. I may, you know, I think that looks good. I'm okay with that overlapping. It's a cute little card, not too bad. So I think this is done and we're gonna go ahead and export it now and then upload it to Design Space and continue. So we go to File, we go to Export. I'm gonna save this to my desktop. So I'm gonna click on Desktop. I want this to be an SVG and I want this to be Merry Christmas. Going to click save and by default, because I have design space compatible checked, it's automatically a 72 DPI and OK. All right, so now that I am in design space, we just need to upload that. So I clicked on upload, upload image and browse. I'm going to go to my desktop and my Merry Christmas is here. I'm going to choose it. I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to actually click on it to insert it. And now it is on my design space. All right, now that we have our file loaded into design space, now we need to tell design space what we wanted to foil and what we wanted to cut. So as you can see, by default, everything changes to cut. And we want to go ahead and change this to draw. And we want this to be draw. We want the swirls to be draw, and we want the tree to be draw. The only thing we want cut is the outline. 
So now all I need to do is make sure that everything's attached because if everything is not attached, it will want to put these on separate mats. So if you click on the Merry Christmas, you can see that everything gets highlighted and I can click attach and then make it. Now this is an important step. You're going to want to make sure you move this down to the bottom and I will show you why in a little bit. And I'm going to make reference of where my design is going to foil. So this is about six and a half by maybe four and a quarter. So I want to make sure that my foil covers this entire space here so that I can get that foiled. And I will go ahead and click continue. When your machine connects, you're going to want to make sure you leave the cardstock to whatever cardstock that you're using. So I am using regular AC cardstock, so I do have this set to cardstock today. And now I'm going to go to the machine and continue this on. All right, now as you can see, I did put my foil down and it is covering my design completely. And I'm going to load it into my machine and let it go. And I'll meet you back when it's almost done. All right, now we're just finishing up with the foil process and I will show you why we moved the paper and the foiling to the bottom of the mat. So once it is done foiling, it will push out the mat. And at this point, we're gonna wanna hit the pause button before it starts to cut. And the reason why we put it to the bottom left is so that we could easily remove the tape. Now, if we left the design at the top, it would be a little bit more difficult for us to remove the tape and the foil, but putting the design and moving it down on our mat makes it a lot easier to remove all of that when it's time to remove it. So now that I am removing all of my tape, all of the foil, you get a little bit of a sneak peek of the cool card or the card base we're making. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click the pause button again to resume it. And now this is where the cutting starts and you'll see the foil has been removed and it cuts nice and cleanly. If I would have left the foil there, it would have made a little bit of a mess and I might not get a clean cut. So I am going to unload my mat and I am going to pull that off and let you see the card or the card base. And there you go. Super cool. Thank you guys again for joining me. Please don't forget, if you click the subscribe button as well as the bell icon located on the bottom right of your screen, you will be notified and alerted whenever we upload new content. Until next time, have a great day.